All right, well, I guess we can get going. Um, so quick announcement, the, the CFP for both of the KubeCons for winter opened. Um, so that's the one in Seattle um, in December, and then there's one in China in November. So it uh, would be really great to get, uh, to get more people speaking. So if you're out there interested in, in talking about stuff, um, it would be great to do a, do a proposal. So let me know if you need any help with anything, um, or I'm sure you can talk to Chris also. But it's a it's a good opportunity, and particularly if you're an end user, um, I you know I, I think those talks are super super popular. All right, so um, I guess I just wanted to talk through the extension policy. So there's a link in the meeting notes doc. Um, Oops, sorry, the phone is ringing here for some reason. Um, so, uh, so the idea behind the extension policy for people that haven't actually read it is that uh, we have kind of an increasing number of organizations that would like to add extensions to the repo and it's um, eclipsing, I would say, our ability to do quality code reviews and figure out how to manage this entire situation. So I uh, put together kind of a, a straw proposal. There's no, there's no perfect solution here. Um, I'll just briefly summarize it. So the idea behind the proposal is that for the extensions that are in the repo, uh, we would like to maintain the same quality bar effectively that we're using for all of the core code. So that means uh, style, testing, code reviews, all of that. So you know, the idea being that the extensions in the repo to, to the extent that we can guarantee it are production quality, release candidate quality. Uh, that obviously means that we have to have people that can do those code reviews and that actually care about them. So the proposal that I put together uh, is basically saying that in order to get an extension in the repo, one of the existing maintainers uh, effectively has to sponsor it. So that maintainer would kind of shepherd the process, like make sure that code reviews are happening well. Um, and then what we would do is eventually use the GitHub code owners feature so that we'll get you know, two reviewers on that extension moving forward. Um, and it doesn't have to be senior maintainers. You know, we would kind of relax that component of it. Uh, and the idea is then that we can largely just push through reviews to extensions directly to people that quote own that extension. Um, and then an existing maintainer can just rubber stamp, you know, those reviews and basically merge them. Or it's acceptable if a maintainer is one of those reviewers and is actually doing work, that's, that's fine also. So, um, but the, the kind of the fundamental goal here is to incentivize people who would like to get extensions in the repo. And there's a, a growing number of companies that would like to do that to actually be maintainers if they would like to get extensions in the repo. So it's kind of a pay, pay to play if you will. Um, Alyssa had the legitimate concern that that bar might be too high. And like, I don't, I don't really have a good answer here. So in terms of, you know, whether we should say, okay, like we'll do the reviews and shepherd it through if you agree to do these five issues for us or something like that. Um, and that's a totally reasonable proposal. I, I, I have a feeling that we're just going to have to see how it, how it goes. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to kind of open it up for discussion and just see if anyone had any thoughts or concerns or uh, wants to do something different. You're on mute. Hi, Matt. Oh. Hi. I just unmuted myself. <laughs> this is Stefan Zercher. Um, I was wondering if you had any thoughts on what might happen in the future if you know you get a couple maintainers for an extension and then they you know move on in their careers and aren't yep. interested or don't have the time to to continue to to do that work for an extension yeah so i i put um i put a small section in the in the doc here about that and like again there's no there's no perfect answer here my my assumption is that once an extension is in the repo 
it's everyone's responsibility to do basic maintenance. So basically like if there's an API refactor, like it's people's responsibility to go through and fix the extensions as part of that refactor. That's kind of the, the benefit of the quote mono repo approach in this case. Um, the, the kind of the way that I wrote the proposal though, is that obviously it's acceptable that maintainers of extensions move on. If there's major known issues in an extension and we can't find replacement maintainers, like if there's no one that wants to step up to basically maintain it, we would have a vote of the maintainers and then we would basically delete it. Yeah, so what, what, All right, that's interesting. That's interesting. what do other communities do? Like what's the policy in the Linux kernel? <laughs> as far as I can tell, the Linux kernel is like, total chaos. I mean, it's like there, there, there are drivers that like have literally one person that ever wrote the code and no one ever reviewed it. So the, the, the bar, as far as I can tell, and my information might be out of date here. So if there's people on the call that, that kind of understand the process better than I, please speak up. But my impression is that the Linux kernel has a lower bar. And I think part of that is that they don't do the same type of CI that we actually do. Like they don't, they don't build the whole code and actually test it. Like they build, you know, the one configuration that works or a couple configurations and do CI and like a lot of the code there's code, I believe in the Linux kernel tree that doesn't even build. So um, like, it's just, that's just kind of, there's bit rot there. So one community that actually may be slightly instructive here, and I have not poked my head over in a couple of years now, um, but at one point I was a maintainer or, on, on Wireshark back when it was Ethereal. And, and the, the baseline was your, your shit had to work, which Ethereal is just basically one giant shambling mound of plugins effectively, right? It's all extensions to dissect various yep. protocols. Um, and and the, the sort of rule of thumb was if a major API change was being made, which at one point happened frequently, Whoever was making that change was responsible for getting it into all of the places in the code base. But then beyond that, you know, if, if something was truly legitimately broken and nobody was interested in fixing it, exactly what you just described, it went away. Yeah. So you're, you're sort of in the, in the critical path for stuff that's been done this way for decades. Okay. We have both the build issues, which I think are solvable, and the quality issues. And that's kind of like, you know, where why we actually care about the code review bandwidth here, right? I mean, if it was just doesn't build, CI could do the job of uh, dealing with scalability as we get more maintainer, uh, as we get more extensions and we wouldn't need to scale the maintainers. But I feel it, it, like we, we actually want to maintain the same quality bar as the core code. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's again, it, it's like, so just being honest and like realistic about it, quality comes from production use. Like there's no, there's no substitution for production use and it's hard to track the production use of all of the extensions. Like very clearly some of them have a lot more production use than others. So um, I, I, I guess the other thing that came to mind um, and, and this is something that we don't have to do initially is that although I still want to do a CI of all code, now that we have a very nice extensible build system, one thing that did occur to me is that we could, we could uh, publish two separate Docker images. One of them is a release build, which is basically Envoy everything, right? Like you get all extensions that are in the repo. And then one of them is like Envoy blessed, like call it what you will, but like it's the subset of extensions that we as maintainers feel have very good production coverage. Um, so like if, if users are looking for like the quote blessed set of extensions, um, you know, that would be a place to start. And then if people want to use the giant bucket, they can use the, the other Docker image effectively. I mean, it doesn't need to even be done with Docker images. It's, I mean, this is this gets back, and now we're getting drifting a bit off topic. But to the original idea that we would have the effectively the equivalent of config files for builds, and we would have full minimal, and yeah. then the, the, the sure. standard build, which would possibly include that or, or experimental. No, one. of course, yeah, and, and and like we can easily do that. I was just making the point that most people don't know how to build Envoy, and they don't want to do it, right? So it's yeah. like just if if we're going to do a minimal and a and a full like i see no reason not to just like do a ci run for both of those and publish two docker images like it's just it's just kind of a nice convenience for people i think yeah so um 
my main thought, and I think this is already covered, is that if some extension code has less scrutiny than others, if that is resident, you know, if that isn't built, then it can't really do any harm. So if the Docker images and the kind of pres prescribed way of building the minimal subset doesn't even pull in that stuff, yep. then it does make sense to have like a lower bar and make it e uh, easier for people to get their stuff in and use it. We also, we also had this idea that we would have a separate repository mm -hmm. for the, which was just open access. Anyone could just dump whatever they wanted there, I guess, as long as maybe it compiled, but that was the only bar. Yeah, so so my my idea there, which is not part of this proposal, is basically we would have an extension sandbox repo. It would look just like Envoy filter example. We would do exactly what we do today. We would do CI on it. We would on every Envoy master commit, we would, you know, we would basically push the current submodule up to date and like the current maintainers won't track CI status on that repo. Like if it's broken, it's broken. Like the, the larger community will have to come through and basically fix it. Um, I, I don't feel like, I think that could be an interesting way to go. I don't feel like there's enough demand yet to kind of justify setting that up, but I feel like that's something that we can definitely track. Um, I, I guess my vote would be to start with some variant of this proposal and like, let's just see how it goes and like where, where the friction is and kind of like what people are complaining about. Um, yeah. And I think if we hit a situation where someone really wants an extension and no maintainers want it and the people don't want to be maintainers, they could maybe set up that, that yep. secondary repo. Right. Yeah. Right. Or, or, you know, I mean like there's even intermediate solutions. There's like, we have a documentation section where people link to their like repos, which have their extensions in it or something like that. Right. I mean, it's like, there's lots of low friction ways. I just feel like we can be nimble here and kind of like what we're doing today is not working. So like, let's try something different. And then if that doesn't work, we can, we can try something else, I guess. Can you clarify uh, what, what we mean by an extension as well? Like, is everything now treated as an extension? So, or are there some it, things that would make it to like core mono? Right. So that was the, I spent like three weeks doing that giant repo reorganization, which was truly awful, but it's now paying off basically everything in source extensions. So like there's a, there's a very, I think, um, and in the, in the root of the repo, there's a file called repo layout.md um, that kind of lays this all out. But basically anything in the extension section of the repo is what we're talking about as an extension. So like these are all of the static registration extension points and in the future will likely also support dynamic loadable modules in, in these same places. So with respect to uh, the sandbox, uh, so just to relay the experience we've had with VPP. So from the beginning, we, we did sen set up a sandbox. And uh, so in some instances there, you know, and this is where two and a half years in, uh, there are some, ex you know, sandbox uh, implementations that people still play with. And there are a lot of them that, you know, we originally had a 90 day or, or, or six month policy to automatically purge, which we've never really done. Um, but it, it, in some cases, it's been fine. Some cases there's stuff that's just bit rotted and left dead there. There's still stuff that people use. So, I mean, I think it has some value, uh, you know, as a place to just put stuff that, that are, are uh, at least at one point had been relevant. Uh, to the mainline code. Cool. Yeah, I, I'm not opposed to it. I, I just don't think, I, I don't want to do all the work, set it up and like have all the policies if like no one's going to end up using it. Um, yep. So I, I think here the, the sort of suggestion of let's wait until we have that problem is probably the best one. Uh, let's wait until we actually actively have the problem of an extension that nobody wants to maintain and then we can talk about the right way to deal with it. Okay. Um, what, one thing that I'm, I'm tracking with Alyssa and Harvey is that we, we need to get someone from Istio to, to yeah. either be a maintainer or, or like do a bunch of work because they, they have, they have quite a few extensions. So I, about that. yeah. Okay. So that's something that I think the three of us can take offline and then hopefully we can report, report back on that. Okay. 
Okay, cool. Um, so if there's no major objections, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of clean this up just a little more and then I'm going to um, do a PR to the repo in like the governance section where I'll, I'll link to this doc and then we'll kind of make it the quote official policy and we can just see, see how it goes. Okay. Um, great. Dave, do you want to give us an update? Sure. Um, unfortunately, I, I was sidetracked quite a bit last week doing some uh, VPP release management stuff. Um, so I have made some progress. Uh, and uh, so I hope to have a patch this week, a PR this week um, that I can, uh, can publish that will uh, let us uh, identify the areas that I'm, I'm running into issues. But for now, it's, it's, I'm still making forward progress. So okay. Uh, what yeah, one thing to point out is uh, Brian Payne from Pinterest just did a PR to start the work of getting rid of FD from the buffer interface. Um, okay. That, that is part of what you'll need to do, which is very convenient that he started to do that. Yep. You might want to reach out to him over email or Slack. I can make that connection just because he, he had investigated a little more as to like what, what was required to actually make that happen. Um, yep. But, but that's work that needs to get done. So if he's already done that investigation, that might be useful. Yeah, that would be great. Um, because yeah, there, there's some areas that I keep getting stuck mentally. So okay. yeah, sure. cool. And, and, and I've been focused not on, you know, just on the generic, let's get rid of the FD stuff. I haven't been actually working on, um, you know, extension stuff that, that might be specific to VPP. So great. Cool. Anyone else have anything that you would like to chat about? Uh, on that note, I think there, I'm a third person working on some refactoring for the UDP stuff. So what, what was kind of the outcome that we just mentioned that Brian had pushed up some changes or we should follow that and build off of that? Um, there's a PR that you can look at and merge like in, in the last day. Um, it, it just, it, it doesn't change the interface yet. Um, but we no longer call into libevent to actually do the read. So the read has been lifted out. Um, and then there's just some more refactoring that needs to get done to basically get rid of the read and the right methods from, from buffer. Okay. Is there like an epic type of issue that, that tracks all these things? If, within if his only issue? there was, <laughs> but we have GitHub. So um, I say, hey, Chris, what was the thing that people keep talking about that we can supposedly use that sucks less than what we're For, doing? Uh, you mean like GitHub project boards? The replacement no, boards? I thought there was some other tool that people were using that, that you told me about. Like project management tool for GitHub. Uh, there's waffle.io. No, I, 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 I mentioned reviewable.io. That was just tracking your backlog of PRs oh. to review, not actually um, Jira Epic board style. Of What's waffle? Another project board esque type thing, Trello esque. And, and it's for GitHub or yeah, no? For GitHub. Um, so if people are into it, I'm. <laughs> I'm a big fan of project management. So um, I'm, I'm happy to look into some solutions. Like I would love to have some better way of like trapping, tracking epics with like sub issues. Um, so if people aren't going to flip out about it, I, I can investigate. Hey, 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 Chris, what's your impression been of the GitHub project boards? Like is, is that? Uh... It's improved. Um, it will probably work for you, I think, depending what you want to do. So okay, all right. Um, let let me go poke around a little bit and 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 see because I kind of agree that if we could have, it's like labels only go so far before it's kind of a pain. So um, let's see if we can do project boards for different projects, and that that might be useful. Sounds good to me. Okay, and I. I won't actually suggest that we set up Jira because I'm sure people would, would freak out. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Okay. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Have a good one.